Okay, in this problem, we have a, a submarine, and it says that it begins its ascent to the surface of the ocean when it is 500 feet below sea level. So this is what we have right now. We have the submarine. It's under the water. Okay, so it's in the water. It's below the ground. And it says it's 500 feet below the ground. So... If this is the top, if this is out of the water right here, so this is the surface, the submarine is 500 feet below. So to show that it's below, we're going to use a negative. The negative represents that it's under the water there. Okay, then it tells us that the submarine is going to ascend, or ascend. So that means it's going to come, begin to go up. So it says it rises at a rate of 5 feet every minute. So what that means is that in one minute, it's going to go up 5. So something like this, it's going to go up 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, let's say that's 5 feet. Now it's at 495 feet in one minute. And then another minute goes by, and it's going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 490 feet every minute. It's going to rise up 5 feet. So it's going to slowly get to the surface where it's outside of the water. So that's what's going on in this problem. So then it tells us, suppose that it continues this rate of moving up until it reaches sea level. Use d of t as, a function, as the function of depth. So we're having d of t, or just d, represents the depth. So how far under the submarine is. Oh, well, let me put a t there. There we go. Oh, no. Depth of the submarine. And then it says that T is the time. So I'm going to let T represent, it says, the time. And the time is in minutes. And we should also say that the depth of the submarine is in feet. Okay. So now it says write an equation. So D of T represents the depth at a given time in minutes. So if the submarine is under the water, it's currently negative 500 feet. And then it's going to move up, so plus, it's going to go up 5 feet every minute. So if it goes up 5 feet and we keep adding 5 and adding 5, that's the same thing as multiplying by how much time, how many minutes. So we're going to put in our equation plus 5t. So that is our equation that models the depth of this submarine as it's moving up to the surface. Okay, then we're asked if this data is discrete or continuous. So since we can have um, one and a half minute, we want to include, we can include, and we can find what the depth of this submarine is in one and a half minutes. Since this is possible to plug in, a decimal and do negative 500 plus 5 times 1.5 since it is possible and it makes sense that we can have that the submarine submarine as it rises is going to be rising in even one and a half minutes then we can find that it is possible it would be, the submarine would be negative 492.5 feet below sea level. So since this data point is possible and it has decimals, that is why it's continuous. It's measurable, um, the points or this data here. So remember, discrete only means that we only want one foot and two foot and three foot or one minute and two minute, but the submarine is going to continuously be uh, ascending. It's not going to stop. It's just going to slowly be rising and every minute it has risen five feet. 
But in between, we want to count where it is in between one minute and two minutes and so on. Okay, then the next part says to take the function and to find the depth at the given times. So it wants to know in zero minutes, before this submarine even starts, so if we plug in a zero for t, this is saying what's the depth at time zero? So negative 500 plus 5 times zero, zero. Remember we always multiply before we add in order of operations. So we get negative 500. And that makes sense that it's going to begin 500 feet below the surface level before any time has started. So now we're going to repeat this, but instead of a time of zero, this time it says 20 minutes. So we're going to find the depth after 20, at 20 minutes. So we're going to multiply first, that's 100, and then combine it with negative 500, and that makes negative 400 feet. So it's 400, that means it's 400 feet below sea level. Okay, so now we're going to do 40. So find the depth at 40 minutes. So we're going to multiply here, that's 200, and negative 500 plus 200 is negative 300. So that represents that the submarine at 40 minutes is 300 feet below the sea level. Now go ahead and pause the video and continue plugging in the 60 and the 80 for the minutes. So when we plug in 60, we would get negative 200 feet. And then when we plug in 80, the depth at 80 minutes would be 100 feet below. Next we're asked to find the horizontal intercept. So on a graph, this is the horizontal axis, we want to know where does this equation cross that axis. So typically this is the x-axis, but in this problem, since this axis, the independent variable, is time, instead of x, they have chosen to have us use t. So instead of finding the x-intercept, it's technically, we have to find where does it cross the t. So that means we need to find out what t is here. So we're going to replace the depth with 0 and solve for t. Because again, this is usually x, but it's t. So this is usually the x-axis. So we want to figure out what this is. So we need to solve the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and add 500. I'm going to divide by 5, and we get 100 for t. So it asks, what is the horizontal intercept? And it would be 100. When the time is 100, the depth that we plugged in, the depth is 0. So that is our horizontal intercept, 100 comma 0. Now we are asked to explain what that represents. So since the time is 100, we would say add 100 minutes. The submarine depth is 0 and it was measured in feet. So feet, zero feet. Now that sounds a little funny. At 100 minutes, the submarine's depth is zero feet. Wouldn't that be better if we instead made it more real life and say, at 100 minutes, if the depth is zero, that means it's not under the water. So it'd make more sense if we wrote, at 100 minutes, the submarine is at sea level. 
Or, instead of sea level, you could also say it's at, at the surface. <clears throat> So what that means is this, that the submarine is finally here. It's finally above the water. It has no depth under the water. So it's out of the water. That's what we're saying here. So instead of saying at 100 minutes the submarine has a depth of zero, why not say what does zero feet means? It means that it's not out of the wa it's out of the water and it's not under the water anymore. The submarine is at the surface or is at sea level. Okay, so to find the vertical intercept, let's make sure we understand what the vertical intercept is. It's where does the graph cross the vertical axis? So if I draw a picture right here, this is the vertical axis. And since our time is dependent, that's how we know that this is t and that the depth is d. So that means we want to find out where does it cross this axis here. So in other words, we want to find out what is the depth if we plug in 0 for t. So if we plug in 0 here. So we have negative 500 plus 5 times 0 is 0. And we can get negative 500. So the depth, this is saying that the depth when the time is zero, so when we plugged in a zero here, when the time is zero, the depth is negative 500 feet. So instead of saying when the time is zero, the submarine is 500 feet below sea level, what would make more sense would, to, would say initially, Initially, the submarine is 500 feet below sea level. That would explain what this point here that we found, our answer, 0, negative 500, what that means. Instead of saying initially the submarine is 500 feet below sea level, we could also say um, the submarine started. We could say the submarine starts at a depth of 500 feet below sea level. Um, before any time, before the time had started, um, what would be wrong is to say this. Initially, the submarine is negative 500. If you put negative 500 feet below sea level, below sea level is what negative already means. So then you're um, putting a negative here, and below sea level means negative as well. So that's incorrect. It's improper to write it that way. So we don't need to put negative 500 because that's what this tells us, that it is a negative 500. So again, we don't want to put a negative 500 there. We also don't want to say that the submarine is negative 500 feet. We want to explain what this math is saying, and the negative represents below sea level. So don't tell me that the the submarine is negative 500 feet. Tell me what that negative represents. Okay, so now we are going to graph the function. So the first thing we need is a title. Well, since we are graphing the depth of a submarine, I'm going to call mine submarine depth. So that's my title. So I got a title. Now we have to label the horizontal and the vertical axis. Well, in this problem, t is the time minutes. And our other variable was d, which is the depth, and that's measured in feet. So one of these is going to be the horizontal axis, this axis, and the other is going to be this way. So remember we've talked in class that the independent one always goes on the horizontal axis. So since the depth of the submarine depends on the time, the depth of the submarine is the dependent variable, so it's the one that we're going to label on this axis, on the vertical axis, whereas we're going to have time be on the horizontal. Okay, well, since we have a submarine, and the submarine is going to start 
off at negative 500 and then it's going to move itself up to the surface. We know that since it's moving up that it's going to start at negative 500 so that means that the depth is negative, starts out negative, and then time is always positive. So we need the quadrant. We have four quadrants on a graph. We need to use the quadrant such that time, which time is going on this axis, needs to be positive, but the depth has to be negative. So that is how we know we're going to use quadrant four. I'm going to go by fours. So I'm going to have this be four. And I'm not going to label all of these. So I'm going to go four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. So I'm going to go ahead and label every fifth one. So my horizontal axis looks like this. Remember, if this, if every square is worth 4, then if from here to here it's 4, then that's 8, then that's 12, 16, and 20. So you can't space them out differently. Okay, so we have the horizontal axis labeled, now, and the vertical axis about ready to be labeled here. So since the depth, the lowest depth of the submarine is negative 500, I need to make sure that I can see negative 500. So I'm going to go ahead and go by 50s. So this is 50. So then this is 100. And instead of labeling every single one, um, that's 150, that's 200. And again, these are all negative. And then this is negative 250, so this is negative 300, negative 350, negative 400, negative 450, negative 500, negative 550, and then negative 600. And I'm going to stop there. So now I'm going to graph my points. So the first one is initially the submarine is at negative 500 feet, so right here. And then after 20 minutes, so in 20 minutes, it's negative 400 feet, so right here. And then in 40 feet, it's negative 300 feet. And then in 60 feet, it's negative 200. And then in 80, it's negative 100. And we said that this is continuous because the submarine is continually ascending. It's not going to stop. We're going to include even the decimal heights in between. So we're going to go ahead and connect them. But we are not going to put arrows because it's going to reach the surface. It's not going to fly and go up in the air. It's just going to reach the surface. And we're not going to put an arrow over here because it never goes below negative 500. It's in this graph, particular equation we're graphing, the lowest the submarine goes is negative 500. So are the points connected if they should be? Yep, we connected them. And is the graph in the right quadrant? We talked about that it is, because we need positive and negative, and that's in quadrant 4. Um, so our graph is good here. Now, if we go back to the other problem we did here, it asked for the horizontal intercept, and we said that in 100 minutes, the submarine is at the surface. That's what we algebra algebraically found here. Now, if we look at our graph, that's what we have here. If we extend the points, because it's continuous, it extends, it makes a line, because our equation, our function here, was linear, this equation, we knew it was going to make a straight line, which it does.